Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Executive Intern Speaker Series. My name is Emma Pyrak, and I am the Executive Intern to the Office of Marketing and Communications here at Fisher. Today, I'm joined by Fisher alum, CJ Gaffney, who is currently the Vice President of Group Strategy at Partners in Napier uh, here in Rochester. He has over 15 years of experience in the media and advertising industry, and I'm very excited to be here today with CJ as I myself am looking to hopefully begin a career in advertising. So welcome CJ and thank you for taking the time to be with me today. Absolutely, thanks Emma. All right, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, so just first off, can you tell us your story of your career path, where you are today, how you chose this career and how it has impacted your life? Uh, sure, so um, I went to St. John Fisher and graduated in um, 2006, um, kind of, you know, went to a liberal arts college, was sort of, you know, uh, aimlessly floating, <laughs> um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I do remember, um, I think it was either my junior or senior year, um, I took a course in advertising. Um, it was taught by an adjunct professor who was kind of doing the job during the day and then, um, you know, kind of came to our course and divvied us up into little mini agencies and uh, awarded only one of the groups in A. Like that was the kind of the deal from the get go. And I just thought that was really cool. And I remember something kind of clicked in that moment. It was the most engaged I had been, you know, in a class. Um, you know, we had, I was a communications journalism major. So I had exposure to, um, you know, at that time, I think it was journalism, um, broadcast, public relations, advertising. I might be leaving something out, but it, we sort of, you know, you, you got exposure to all of those things and tried to figure out what to um, specialize in. And um, like I said, that course for me, um, I just, I remember very clearly like something clicked that just felt like I think I could do this. And so um, both the combination of advertising and then also just honestly being in, you know, uh, Rochester in the, the safe bubble of St. John Fisher for four years. Um, I, I ran to New York, um, uh, to the city to, to try to um, see if I could, you know, go through some advertising boot camp. Um, and I basically, um, you know, I got very lucky to get an interview with an amazing company, um, you know, starting as an assistant. And uh, that was Universal McCann. Um, at that time, uh, we shared an office um, with McCann Erickson, uh, the sister agency. So just like a, you know, world famous, you know, one of the best in the world. Um, places to be around and be exposed to um, and really learn from. It was an awesome experience. Um, but I started in the media um, side of things, media planning and buying, and that um, that came pretty quickly, not because I was good at it, but I'm kind of a TV, film, music mm -hmm. junkie. Um, so that sort of, um, you know, a lot of people tell me that my consumption of those things is bordering on unhealthy, but um, I... Um, it, it, I was able to pick up media planning pretty quickly it just as a result of that. Um, it was pretty natural for me. And so um, I did that for a while and then, um, uh, you know, forced my way into a department that was growing at the time where they were trying to do some, uh, some more creative things in terms of, of media placements beyond just traditional TV and print and radio spots. It was, you know, looking for those um, more creative ways to leverage media buys started doing that and then like I said I was in New York so I had an opportunity to then uh, parlay that experience the media experience to the client side um, and I actually got an opportunity to work at a television network um, so I got a front row seat and uh, and seeing how you know television really works and how um, how to market and develop uh, programming which is I just I totally nerded out I thought that was just just a really fun experience and then um, my wife and I um, had our first child there and um, she happens to be from Rochester and then obviously I had four great years of fond memories of Rochester so um, it made sense to be closer to family where we could have the support network so I moved to Rochester and then um, that was about five years ago and since then I've been able to work at some really cool um, agencies uh, here in Rochester uh, most recently I've, I've spent the last uh, few years with partners in Napier um, and it's it's just been a really ideal fit for me personally because um, it's you know an agency that has just world class talent. I mean, I can say that like I, I was able to have really uh, you know great experiences in New York and compare that to the types of people that I work with here, and they're just 
you know, amazing, talented people. Um, and then interestingly enough, you know, Partners Napier isn't um, an agent. We're headquartered here, so I get that balance of the lifestyle. But most of our clients are, are scattered all over the country. Um, um, even before COVID, you know, it was really geography wasn't a huge part of it. You know, we got an opportunity to, um, you know, so I, I get to scratch that itch of getting to work with people, you know, outside of uh, the Rochester market, but still have that balance um, of, you know, the, the family life and the support that um, makes Rochester awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I will say you gave me one piece of advice previously to this. Um, if, uh, not, if you're going to go somewhere new, now's the time to do it when you're young and in your early 20s and you can go and if it doesn't work out, you can go home. So that was, I thank you for that because that was one of the greatest pieces of advice I've re received recently. Um, but could you tell us what's one of the toughest parts of your job or your career? Um, I think... <laughs> And then there's a lot, like with any job, you know, there's challenges every day, but I think that the idea that the best idea doesn't always win, um, I think that takes some getting used to, um, you know, in, in this industry where we're so passionate about um, the work we do. We think, you know, we think we have these really smart solutions um, creatively for our clients and then, you know, for any variety of reasons, um, you name it, you know, um, sometimes they don't always work out. And so that, you know, the best idea doesn't necessarily win in the business uh, side of things is, uh, is a tough one to swallow from time to time. Um, and I think also just having a healthy perspective, um, it's, it's tough and in, in you, you hear people who work in advertising and in agencies, you know, talk about agency life a lot. That's, you know, kind of code for, um, you, it's easy to get wrapped up in things. And so, um, you know, it, like I said, you put a lot of your blood, sweat and tears into, into this work. And, you know, if, if it falls flat, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to, to solve. So you got to have thick skin. Absolutely. Um, so to counter that, what's the most rewarding thing about your job or career? Um, I mean, aside from just, you know, I really do get a thrill out of just, you know, working closely with hyper creative people. I mean, I, I have such an appreciation for creativity and the creative process, you know, but like I have, there's so many talents that I don't have that I wish I had. And so you get spoiled to be around like people that can just whip up and visualize ideas like artists that I, that I work with writers that can just, you know, turn straw into gold, you know, in terms of, you know, um, you know, how they interpret, you know, the, 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 the business problem. I think that's just super cool to get to watch day in and day out. Um, I think, on the, on the other end of it, I, I think it's, this might sound corny, but I've actually had in, in the past year, even, um, uh, two clients is quote clients that quoted, you know, like talking to you guys is the best part of our week, you know, cause you know, marketers have to deal with a lot of things, you know, people who are running small brands and businesses, they're so focused on a million other things that like we get to be the fun part, you know, hopefully where they get to dream a little bit and figure out, you know, um, creative solutions to the problems that they're having from a business standpoint. And so um, it's fun to be the fun part of, you know, our clients week. And I think to, you know, give them some hope about the things that they may not be able to visualize for themselves, kind of unlock that potential. I think that's, it's pretty rewarding, you know, when we do it right. That sounds awesome and definitely very exciting. Um, looking back in your career so far, has there been a moment that you would look back and say that you're proud of? Um, that's it. So I, there's, I mean, there are, there's, there's awards in our industry, you know, um, different accolades and things like that. And then the nature of competing to win new business, you know, that like when you do that, that those are definitely moments to be proud of just when you're a part of the process and, you know, like, so winning over a couple of like hard clients, beating out agencies for, you know, that are, they're maybe bigger and more reputable than, than you are like, those are definitely proud moments, but um, not one in particular comes to mind and definitely had some cool opportunities and, and things I've been exposed to by the nature of the job that I, I, I'm very you know, fortunate that I, that I got to experience. But I think what I'm most proud of, I think, is that professionally, um, I haven't burned any bridges, <laughs> at least I'm aware of. You know, I, I'm proud to say that like when I call my old colleagues from other jobs, you know, that they're willing to pick up the phone and, you know, um, offer help. And, you know, I, I feel like that's, I've, I've been lucky in that so far at every phase, um, you know, I've been able to really take the good from each role and, you know, parlay that into the next and, you know, made some, just made some awesome relationships. Along oh, that's the way. awesome. 
Um, so looking back again, is there anything that you'd wish you'd known when you first started out in your career that you didn't know? Um, that the best ideas don't always win. <laughs> um, no, I, I think, uh, I think a, a good one to point out, especially in the context of, you know, school to, to professional life is, um, I think just that, that business acumen really matters. Um, I think it's easy to take advertising or any of the related marketing fields. Like it's easy to kind of get drunk on the idea of creativity is like, that's all that matters. Kind of to my point that it's not always just the best idea wins. There's always there's a lot of business factors. And so that's something that I think I may have inadvertently avoided and, and actively avoided, you know, like hard business principles, you know, in my, in my school days, um, you know, thinking that, ah, that doesn't apply to me. Um, but what I found is that really, you know, particularly in the industry of advertising, um, you know, having a sound, like just understanding a firm grasp of the principles of business that that makes you dangerous you know that that then you mix in the creativity and pulling the best from all the wonderfully creative people that you work with and that that then makes it where you can actually sell in these ideas and they're not just subjective but you can really um understand why this is a value to the clients how it's going to help their business so not as sexy as like the idea of, of the dreams of being you know super creative and working at an agency but um, I think the, I guess the advice or something that I wish I had, had known more was to like probably take some more business classes um, so that I could be fluent, you know, mm -hmm. early on. I had to kind of learn it on the job um, over time and there's still plenty of things I don't know. Interesting. That's a great, that's a great thing to take into consideration so that you're not too refined to one area. Are you talking, if you're talking to students or something like that, are there any questions you think students should be at, should be asking when they're entering their career, like starting out? So like just come out of college, what should someone be asking? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess sort of what is it that motivates you? Um, you know, it really motivates you. Like, obviously, like, they, it's hard to take the blinders off when you're, when you're first coming out of school because you just want that first job, um, you know. I think really at the end of the day, um, you know, for, so for my, for my, uh, from my perspective, you know, one of the things that I think is important is that we're in a service industry. Again, you, there, there's kind of like these ideas of like being the hero swooping in and, and having like a lot of the credit, but like, we're actually like in service of our clients, we are helping them, you know, succeed. And so, it's, it's kind of like, are you, are you comfortable working in service of others and, you know, helping being part, playing a role in the success or are you motivated by, you know, being solely, you know, self-driven and, and getting the credit for the things that you accomplish? Like, I think it's important to kind of really know what motivates you. Like, I mean, I'm in awe of, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, people that are, you know, create startups and things like that. Like, it sounds exhausting, <laughs> um, you know, but, but it's, it's not just out of laziness. I actually do enjoy sort of listening and trying to creatively help figure out a solution to the problems that maybe uh, a client or a brand isn't seeing. And so like that being part of a team and working on that to try to like improve, like that motivates me, um, you know, more so than being like, I have this idea, this is my company, I'm in charge, you know, I, I, it's not really my style, but I think asking yourself that early on might help you make the right decisions in terms of what to pursue um, at that time. Absolutely. Um, so how has COVID-19 had an impact on your organization specifically or your industry? Has it had any huge impact on the change of how you do business other than maybe working remotely? Yeah, I think at its core, it's, um, it's just been hard to lose the, the human touch. Like we're, there's, there's an element of camaraderie to, you know, working at an agency. Again, I've, I've kind of beat this to death it, it, that it's a lot of interesting and different and talented individuals working together that when it, 
when it works right, you know, when we do it right. And so to not have that, the phys physical proximity to where we can just, you know, throw stuff on the wall and, you know, move stuff around and actually like riff in real time. It's really hard, hard to replicate that in, you know, in these, in these ways. Um, I think we've done a good job of adjusting, but you'll never really replace it. So I think a lot of people are eager to get back to that. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a big part of the appeal of advertising, I think is just, you know, working closely with other people and um, it's tough. And then also the, in the end result, I mean, the, when you think about the, the actual byproduct of the big, you know, sort of tentpole events of what we do, presentations, you know, big presentations, putting all we have really well thought out, choreographed, you know, so that the clients can see, you know, the best of the best of our ideas. It's really annoying to, to do that, you know, through a screen and have like the inevitable, um, you know, tech issues or even just like, you know, we make a lot of high res video, like really like highly produced things like those assets to, to not be able to hit play when you want and have it work properly. And, you know, the audio doesn't sync up. It's like, oh, it's so crushing, you know, when you work so hard. So um, it's a challenge, but hopefully it's not permanent. Absolutely. I know. I'm pretty sure lots of students are zoomed out at this point and not to the same extent or capacity, but we've definitely experienced those Zoom technical difficulties for presentations for classes. Yeah. So if we go back to your time at Fisher, what was your favorite part of Fisher and what were you involved in in your time there? Um, I mean, my favorite part of Fisher was definitely my friends, the people that I met, um, that I'm, many of which I, I still talk to regularly and see regularly. Um, being an idiot with them was a lot of fun. Um, but I think, you know, more from a Fisher uh, offering standpoint, I think one of the big, um, I, I, I did have some pretty memorable, impactful teachers, you know, that, that really, like I said, like I had those moments that kind of clicked a few things in place for me, um, you know, really good teachers do that. I, I doubt there's a handful of people that, um, you know, I remember well, and, you know, I'm very grateful for, you know, the way that the, the kind of passion that they brought to the class, you know, was never boring, you know, they always made it interesting and, and relevant to the real world. I think that that was awesome. And then, um, I did, I enjoyed, I wrote for the Cardinal Courier I, and that was, that was a fun sort of thing as well in terms of just, you know, at that age, being able to have like an ability to, an outlet for writing and I used to write a lot of opinion things, you know, and so that was always kind of fun um, to kind of vent and get that out. But yeah, those are a couple of things I remember. That's interesting you mentioned your professors because I can definitely say I've had some that a few years, not more than a few years down the line, like many years down the line, I'll remember a specific lecture and the impact that had on me. For sure. So uh, again, about Fisher, based on what you've seen on social media, or if you've actually been able to visit campus in the last couple of years, how has Fisher changed and how is it different now than from when you were there? Yeah, it's, it's super weird. I, you know, now my commute, you know, not necessarily every day now because of, of COVID, but I literally drive by Fisher every day now um, on my way to the city. Um, and so that's just funny. But the funny, the, the, the strange thing is that um, so much of the physical construction happened, you know, in the time when I left. Um, I graduated in 2006 and I didn't come back to Rochester. I mean, I did periodically, but um, I was gone uh, in New York City for, um, you know, basically 10 years. And so much physical construction happened in that. Uh, time period that, you know, now when I come back and I see, I mean, it's just, you know, there's just so many buildings, buildings I've never even been in, you know, and I think it's just because it was just so, uh, you know, kind of quaint and intimate at the time. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, how much more there is now. Absolutely. I know uh, when I was a freshman, uh, minus this year, there had been a new building that was either being built or opened in my, the three previous years at Fisher. So a lot I'm changes. Sorry. Um, so the final question, what advice would you offer myself or other Fisher students? Um, I think to just kind of build off of what you and I had chatted about before, um, you know, 
like I said, I can only speak from my personal experience. I, I got so much out of, you know, leaving and going someplace that was a little uncomfortable and trying something new. Um, you know, I'd say for a couple of reasons. Um, of course, you know, exposing yourself to different people in different places, like on a personal level, like only good things come from that, you know, really. But beyond that, like just to like focus it in on a marketing lens, like it's, pretty critical to do the job well. Um, you know, it, not to bash on other professionals, but like, you know, you could be like an accountant or a day trader or something, you know, from the seat of your desk and really not talk to a lot of people and be incredibly good at your job to do, to really, um, to engage with audiences and understand, you know, brands and, you know, how to put out messages and communications that, um, that are actually going to impact people. Like you got to get to know people. You got to know what motivates them. People that are, that are having totally different lived experiences than you. Um, so I think it's really important. Um, and I think also just timely right now, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody, um, graduating right now. It's, it's incredibly hard time. You know, it's super hard in terms of like entering the workforce because of all of the reasons that we all are painfully aware of right now. But at the same time, it's also kind of an interesting thing with like geography doesn't matter as much. Like it used to be like you had to go to these cities or you, if you wanted this type of life, you had to go to the, you know, I don't know. I feel like figure out what you want to, where you want to be. You might be able to, um, you know, um, pull that off, you know, and in different ways. Now I think it's, it could be exciting, you know, um, to, to know that geography is less important, but that being said, I do think, Go somewhere that's different for that experience. You know, that might be a little bit scary. Um, I think it's it's only something to be gained. And like I told you, like the dirty little secret is that, you know, nobody will fault you in your twenties if you if you're trying if you try something and you fail and you gotta pack your stuff up and head home with your tail between your legs. Honestly, you're the only one that cares. Like the rest of the world, nobody knows, nobody cares. On a resume, you know, it won't be if you in your twenties, like. You know, so you might as well try something and figure out at, at worst case, you figure out what you don't like. And that's, that's super valuable too. So I just, my, my advice would be to expose yourself to is some different people in different places. I think from a business standpoint, if, if marketing and advertising is something of interest, it's almost critical to doing it well. And then just beyond that, just from, you know, um, just life experience. I think for me, I, I wouldn't trade it. I, I had uh, so much fun. And like I said, I was able to then, you know, another chapter here in Rochester is totally different, but um, it's been, I think it was well worth it. Absolutely. I will say it again. The advice you gave about going somewhere and taking that chance when you're young has probably been some of the best advice I received recently. Oh. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. It has been great to talk to you and I have, it has definitely given me a lot. I've learned a lot about the advertising industry and also given me a lot to think about uh, as myself being graduate this spring. So thank you again for joining us or thank you for joining me today. Um, thank you. Thank you.